Hello and welcome to Tea Break Film Reviews. My name's Michelle and today I'm going to be reviewing The New Mutants. This film has suffered many pushed back release dates, but it is finally in cinemas. So hold your dragon and hear me out. Before we start, please consider subscribing to help support this channel so we can keep making videos like this. The New Mutants follows Danielle Moonstar, a girl whose entire community is wiped out by a mysterious entity. She is the sole survivor and gets taken to a secret facility and told that she's a mutant. All she has to do is find out what her power is, whilst also befriending a bunch of other mutants in the facility in the meantime. One of the most interesting things about this film is its creation. The initial idea from director Josh Boone was to create a horror superhero teen hybrid, citing inspiration such as The Breakfast Club, The Nightmare on Elm Street 3, and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. However, in an insightful article by Vulture, it appears that this hybrid idea was deemed difficult to sell by Fox. The script went through numerous rewrites involving a variety of people that have worked on a variety of genres. I think this is where the film lost itself. Torn between several genres and the legacy of a big franchise, it struggles to find its own sweet spot. The atmosphere goes from low levels of creepy hospital tension to attempting a full-on nightmarish chase sequence slash X-Men action sequence. It just didn't work because the tension hadn't been built up and the pacing felt off, which made the finale kind of anticlimactic. Considering the success of Deadpool and Logan with their offbeat visceral takes on the superhero genre, I'm surprised that the New Mutants was held back so much from taking more daring risks with style. I could see this film being received better if it was released in the noughties or early 2010s, where its tone would have felt fresh, but in many ways it doesn't meet the expectations of what a modern audience wants from a film in these genres. In the same Vulture article, a studio executive notes that the entire film could have been scrapped and reshot and its budget would have still made it the least expensive X-Men film. It was originally meant to be released in April 2017, but was pushed back so as not to clash with other Marvel Universe releases, as well as Disney's purchase of Fox and COVID-19. It definitely feels like this film has been constantly tossed aside and underappreciated, and the final outcome can attest to that. Rather than scrap it, the decision was made to release it, perhaps to serve as Disney's guinea pig to test the waters of COVID cinema, or perhaps because it's on someone's to-do list and it's just easier to cross it out. That said, overall I consider it a good cinematic experience rather than a bad one. One of my favourite things about this film is the VFX, which was beautifully done. During the flashbacks, especially the one with the character of Sam Guthrie, there is a really creative transition between reality and flashback, which was very effective. The finale was also super impressive when the big ticket VFX rolled in. The teen ensemble had good banter between them and the development of their friendship felt comfortably believable. The reveal of each character's power and backstory was given enough time without bringing the pace down, and I was really starting to connect with these characters by the end of the film. However, despite having a Native American lead and a Brazilian character, the film still suffered from a lack of representation, with no black or Asian characters at all. The love story was LGBTQ friendly, but it almost felt like an afterthought. The cinematography felt quite safe, except for a few homages to Boone's cinematic inspirations such as Psycho, but I would have loved to see more creative and unique shots. Perhaps more attention was given to the production design that made the hospital look pretty damn creepy and gave some much needed visual interest for the eyes. Overall, The New Mutants isn't a bad film, it's just not a memorable one. If it's given the green light for a trilogy, then the next installment definitely needs to take bigger risks with style and improve its representation in order to elevate this story and create a more impactful experience. 
Thank you for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to see more videos, and comment with your thoughts on the topic. What superpower would you want if you were a mutant? This has been Tea Break Film Reviews, my name's Michelle, and I hope you have a great day.